In this video, we'll take a look at a problem that involves rotational motion and in particular rotational kinetic energy. In the figure below, we're given an angular speed versus time for a thin rod that rotates about one end. So we have a rod like this. The rod's set like that. It has some length L. It has some mass M and it's rotating around with some angular speed that in fact is changing. It says what's the magnitude of the rod's angular acceleration? Well, the angular acceleration, alpha, is the slope of an angular velocity time graph, that is an omega t graph. So what they're asking me is What's the slope of this straight line? Now, I look up here and it says the vertical axis are marked in increments of 2 rads a second. So that's 2, that's 4, that's 6, and that's 7. So it goes to 7 here, and it looks like it started at minus 2. So this change there was 9 rads per sec and it did this over a time of 6 seconds so alpha is 9 rad per sec over 6 seconds which is 3 halves of a rad per second squared or 1.5 radians per second squared that's alpha so that was pretty simple. If I know I, of course, I could calculate the net external torque that was involved by Newton's second law. Let's see what this is. It says at t equal 4 seconds the rod has a kinetic energy of 1.30 joules. What is its kinetic energy at t equals 0? Now here's the problem all through this. They didn't give me the mass of the rod or the L. They didn't enable me to find any type of moment of inertia in this problem. So how am I going to handle that? Well, the first thing to note here is we come up and say, remember, kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. This is just pulling off our knowledge of translational kinetic energy and using the big board. One half, we don't use M, we use the angular equivalent, mode of inertia. We don't use speed squared, we use the angular speed squared and that gets us a rotational kinetic energy. Now we know the following k 0 seconds divided by k at 4 seconds would have been equal to 1 half i omega at 0 seconds squared divided by 1 half i omega at 4 seconds squared this enables us to cancel the halves and the moment of inertia. So we find that the ratio of the speed at t equals 0 divided by its speed at t equal 4 seconds squared is the ratio of this kinetic energies. So the kinetic energy at t equals 0 is the speed at time 0 divided by the angular speed at time 4 seconds squared times the kinetic energy it had at time t equal 4. I've got some data up here to find this and this. So I go to my table and I look there and at t equals 0 I was going minus 2 rads per second. So I'll put that down here. Mega naught minus 2 rad per sec. Then at t equal 4 seconds I go up here and look at the table. 1, 2, 3, 4, there we go. At that time it's now going 4 radians per second. Omega 4 is 4 radian per sec. And the kinetic energy at t equal 4 seconds, it tells me it's 1.30 joules. 1.30 joules. So, K0 is equal to minus 2 rad 
per sec divided by 4 radians per second squared times 1.30 joules. The radians per second cancel. That's minus 2 over 4 is minus a half squared is minus 1 fourth. So uh, I'm sorry, squared is 1 fourth, the minus going away. And then I multiply that by 1.30, and I get 0 0.325 joules, or 325 millijoules. Being able to read diagrams, knowing your laws of physics and your big board, and being able to think your way through a problem. You don't always need to measure everything in the world so you can plug and chug. In the real world, measurements cost money. Thinking is cheaper and it's far more practical. So people hire people who can think. They can use that for a lot more than they can buying a whole bunch of different instruments to measure things. All right, that's it for this problem. We'll see you in another video.